What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back with another superstar from the world of combat sports. Today, we get to talk to Yanni Diakomahalas, who just notched his fourth Division I title, uh, a feat that's only been done by four other wrestlers. He's the fifth. Very incredible. From Cornell University, congrats, Yanni, on your latest title this past weekend. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, re really cool moment that I'm able to have. Thank you elite company you know we here in uh, the mma world hey it's established now after almost 30 years of the sport wrestling is the base not not to diminish all of the other sports and martial arts that encompass mis mixed martial arts they're all pretty close you know what i mean but it seems like if you're going to start with something it's that one so we often pull away and watch a little bit of march madness or the world championships things like that, just because, uh, you know, we've had so many phenomenal athletes from your sport come to our sport and succeed. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, wrestling, I think it's, it's very tough. You know, the things I hear from guys that are making the transition from MMA to, or from wrestling to MMA say that, you know, the wrestling workouts are the toughest. And I think, you know, like – those guys, I yeah, we're not fighting, but yeah, you're getting punched in the face. I'm getting arm barred. I'm getting choked in the room. You know, I'm yeah. getting put in all these situations that, you know, obviously it's way different when I've got a guy who's been striking his whole life, but I'm getting put in these situations where, you know, my, my heart's really being tested. And, uh, you know, I think that that's some, that's a, that's a, an intangible skill that you see a lot with the, with the guys when they make that transition is like, they're tough, really tough dudes when they're yeah. in there. When not, Plus, the mental capacity that wrestlers have really transitions to our sport again. I, I think there's oftentimes probably fighters that maybe didn't want to lose that last half pound and they'll give up 30 percent, you know, and and you usually don't see that from the wrestling community. I mean, they they push themselves to incredible limits. And and listen, we've been in awe of fighters like Ben Askren, who have won two titles and Johnny Hendricks won a title as well in MMA, two titles he won. You know, we got to know Jake Rochelle, who I believe won three titles. King Moe's a good friend of ours. He represented the United States, you know, international level, D.C., Cejudo. The list goes on and on. Four titles, though, man. Like, that is something pretty special, and I'm pretty sure each one of those guys, whenever they see you, are probably going to shake your hand. Um, what was it like when you were getting ready? I watched the match against Sasso. What was it like when you were getting ready to come out, you know, were, were you, you know, talking to yourself or just, Hey man, this is historic. Uh, what, what were you saying to yourself yeah. to, you know, before the match started? Yeah, definitely. I mean, <clears throat> you know, the big thing with not just that match, but anytime you're in a situation where there's pressure on you, you know, you're always, you're always trying to fall back on what you believe and what you do great. Right. And, you know, kind of just what I was in my ear the whole time is like, listen, you know, these guys, they're going to try to make it close. They're going to try to keep it interesting, going to try to steal a match. Just stay relaxed, stay loose. And if you stay attacking the guy, your points will come. So big thing kind of just in my head the whole time is like attack, attack, forward, pressure, get to the legs, you know, don't rush, just pressure the guy, right? And if you kind of look in that finals match, as the match progresses, I'm attacking more, pushing more. Yeah. And it starts to shift in my favor. So I think kind of the big thing, and not just for that, you know, any kind of big stressful situation for myself is it's like build as the match goes on and stay on that guy. Do not give him a rest when you feel like you take the lead. Yeah, I, I did exactly see that. For one, he seemed like a pretty, pretty fast, quick dude, you know, and early on he was attacking the leg. Um from, from our end, it's like, through my MMA lenses, I was like, oh, is this guy going for some sort of a leg lock or whatever? But obviously, I know, you know, he was trying to grab a lot of singles, twisting your knee. And then you made a you, you did a great job of, of making sure that he, you know, didn't finish those those singles. Um, but I did notice that you stayed composed. And I think that was experience, calmness. And then as the fight wore on, you started to take it over. Um, what You know, is this a guy that you had faced? before many times even through high school up and through through collegiate level or yeah so sam sasso and i have wrestled you know if you date back to high school i think we've wrestled six or seven times and um they've all they've all gone my way but he's uh he's incredibly skilled you know he made the national finals prior to that match 
He's all American to every year he's competed in the national tournament. He was, you know, one of the best high school wrestlers in the country when we were competing in high school. So he's a, uh, you know, top, top level high school and college wrestling talent. Um, and because we had competed so much, very familiar with each other. So he knows exactly what I'm doing. I, I have an idea of what he's doing, you know. So whenever you're, you've wrestled somebody as many times as we have, there's going to be that familiarity aspect that, you know, you're going to have to get creative. You're going to have to do something different, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're, they felt everything, you know, so you're going to have to give them something different. You already silver medaled in a world championships. Uh, in 2015, the world championships were here in Las Vegas, and I went to it. I loved it. Awesome. And that was some high level wrestling, you know what I mean? And you you did the same thing, but in 2022, that, that level? Yeah, so I made my first mat. What you're describing is the senior level men's world championships is, you know, the pinnacle of the sport. It's the best of the best. <clears throat> Much better than, you know, age level stuff. I had made my first world team in the fall of 2021, and I ended, I ended up going 1 1. I lost to an Armenian wrestler named Vazgen Tevanian. Then in 2022, made the team again. Drew him in round one, flipped the script and beat him, and then kind of went on a run. You know, I beat um, an Olympian in the second round. I beat a wrestler from India whose name's Bajrang. He is Olympic bronze, couple time world medalist. <clears throat> in the semifinals, I had a wrestler from Puerto Rico, Sebastian Rivera, who actually wrestled at Rutgers. And then I made I made the gold medal match. I got beat by this Iranian wrestler who, you know, is another young guy, won his world title. He's going to be a uh, some someone I'm going to be competing against for a very long time. Man, so you're already a straight up G, you know, like to already be because you know not not to diminish of course incredible thing that you've done at the NCAA level, but I remember in 2015 I was there, I was asking questions and they're like, "Well, you know, the some of these guys are just older, they've grown into their bodies, they're stronger, uh especially a lot of the Eastern European guys that that don't have M an MMA option or anything like that and they're just constantly wrestling, wrestling, wrestling and testing each other." And to do it at what what was it, 21, 22 years old? Yeah, that was really amazing. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's um the world championships. So the big difference between college wrestling and international wrestling is that in college, it's American folk style wrestling. Folk Only style Americans wrestling. do it. Yeah. Right. The style is a little different, rules a little different than in freestyle, I which is what I prefer. That's what the whole world does. It's it's much more rewarding of your skill. You know, the reason I think the Americans transfer over to the UFC so well is because folk style is so much about control, dominating, staying on top of the guy, right? And you see that transfer over where a wrestler gets on top of a guy and they can't get away from him. And whereas in the freestyle is a way, it's much more of an athletic contest. And you'll see it where, you know, an American guy who's been squeezing and kind of grinding his whole life goes overseas, competes against a Russian who's been training like a, like an athlete, you know, and that happens, right? And now freestyles became more popular in the United States. You know, at least in my time, I feel like it's very popular. And you're seeing guys transfer over, you know, really well. I mean, we had one of our most successful Olympic Games in 2021. And um, Team USA actually won a team world title that year. Yeah. I made the world finals. So we're, 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 we're starting to really take hold of that international scene. Yeah. In fact, as soon as I saw that, I thought, okay, when I ask him about MMA, he is literally going to do one of those. You ever see those guys that when they're playing ping pong, boom, slam it right back at him. I go, no, this guy ain't coming over. He's he's succeeding on the international level this young. I think your goals, your aspirations, your dreams are still focused on wrestling or or am I wrong? Yeah, no, I mean, wrestling, it's my passion. You know, it, I've been doing it since I was five years old. I It's something I want to be perfect at, you know. I, I think about myself like I'm. A, a painter or a mad scientist where it's like, I just want to be absolutely perfect at it. Right. And obviously is that going to happen? No, you know, and who knows in five years we might be talking and I might tell you something completely different and say, you know, I want to fight, but right now, you know, my, my heart is all in for the wrestling. You know, I really want to make a run at this 2024 Olympic year and then hopefully down the line, you know, continue to compete and then maybe segue into coaching or who knows after that what you can do. Would you say you find MMA entertaining at all? Like, do you, do you watch it? Do you enjoy love it? it? I love it. You know, Saturday night is fight night you know, with me yeah. and my buddies. We all get together and watch. I love it. I, I would definitely say I'm a huge fan of MMA and I have an incredible amount of respect for those guys. You know, they're, they're the toughest human beings in all of sports. 
they're making a living off some guy trying to beat them to near death and they're trying to do it back to them. And it's incredibly difficult. And it's a lot of training, a lot of life commitment. You know, I've been around those guys, <clears throat> seen what they do. It's a lot. Well, and I have a ton of respect for those guys. You know, wrestling's had such a big effect on mixed martial arts. But in time, as the UFC got bigger, as mixed martial arts got bigger, could you almost say that the reverse started to happen a little bit too? Did MMA maybe open the doors up for people to go, I want to get into wrestling early on? I think 100%. You know, and and you see it where wrestling is starting to gain MMA fans. I I know kids who I went to school with who have never been to a wrestling match, but thought that, you know, Habib or John Jones was the coolest thing ever. And, you know, they have a wrestling background and they're like, well, I want to watch some wrestling. And now they're wrestling fans. So I, I actually think, you know, as much as wrestling is done for the UFC, just because the wrestlers are doing so well, I think the UFC does equally as much, if not more, of promoting the wrestling because... You know, it's, it, it trickles down, right? You see these guys succeeding. You see a guy like John Jones, who people are calling one of the greatest fighters ever. You know, there was a point where almost all the champs are wrestlers. And I think people are like, well, let's see what these guys are doing. Let's see what that sport's like. And, you know, I think you can't pull fans in that way, for sure. So what you've accomplished is just so out there and so difficult. What would you say separates you from a lot of the other people that have tried to do what you do? You know... I, I don't like to talk about myself a ton. I think one skill that I have that, you know, is really valuable for me, I'm very flexible and I have a really good uh, aptitude for learning. So, you know, kind of growing up, my dad was very interested in like the art of the sport. He was my coach my whole life. So we didn't do a ton of lifting or running or conditioning. We did a lot of technique and live wrestling. So because of that, you know, a lot of my time was spent studying film, watching matches, you know, talking out, talking about it, thinking about it, watching it, you know, and because of that, I, I, I developed this very good kind of internal picture of wrestling, right, where I can see everything and kind of translate that into what I'm doing. And I think when you have something like that, it really allows, you know, my coaches to kind of be like, hey, you need to do this and we can really quickly implement that change, you know, whereas maybe some other guys, not to their fault, but might need, you know, more reps, more time, more, you know, just thought to break that through and make that adjustment. I think if my coaches can jump on something, I, I can really quickly make that adjustment and translate it into my wrestling, which I think is really valuable. Well, we've established, man, that you're a gangster and you say you don't like to talk too much about yourself. So let me pivot here and just throw out a couple names from our sport and you can give me your opinion of, of them as it relates to wrestling and mixed martial arts. We'll start with Bo Nickel, who's made an incredible splash, three time winner of the NC. 2A Division One title at Penn State. I think he's like 3-0, and but man, like a lot of people are already saying this guy could win a title because he's going out there and he's making it look so easily. What, what, what are your thoughts on him and his transition? And Yeah, so Bo's one of those guys who was pretty clear about his desire to fight, you know, probably right from when he graduated. And he kind of went, you know, went away, took, I think he graduated pre-COVID. So he spent a good two or three years just like, sharpening his craft, you know, really getting good at the skills that he needed to build to be a successful fighter. Um, and I think that that shows, you know, he had a plan. And we have a guy who has a plan and the means to execute it. They can they can do really good things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I work with the guys in the training lab a little bit, so I, I do kind of hear what they say about Bo, and they're really excited about what he's doing, his skills, you know, his striking and everything. So, I mean, yeah, he looks great. You know, he hasn't really been tested by anybody, so – you know, when you see a guy like that who's just coming in and putting people on the top of their head really quickly, you uh, can't help but wonder how far they can go, right? So I think he, he's he got, you know, a ton of potential there, especially, you know, so early in his career relative to these other guys. What about guys like Habib, um, Islam, Makashev, you know, the well, Dodgers fighters and the way they've been able to take over the game, their style of combat sambo, their wrestling – what, what 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 do you see when you see them out there? Uh, I love them. I am a huge, huge Dagestan fighter guy. I think they're awesome. I have a ton of respect for that lifestyle too, you know, because so Dagestan, the mountain region, right? That whole area, Dagestan, Assetia, Chechnya, produce, you know, some of the best wrestlers in the world. I think in the Rio Olympics, it was, you know, 30% kind of number of all of the Olympic medalists in wrestling were from Dagestan um, in freestyle wrestling. So. Wow. They're they they they're, they're onto something. Um, 
yeah. you know, growing up, I had a ton of respect for the Russian wrestlers and I, I like, you know, and you, you're starting to see it more and more. I like that. They are just like bear mauling people. You know what I mean? Um, I think the biggest critique you hear from people is they'll call them boring because there's not a lot of striking. But there's something to say about me holding a guy down for 25 minutes and them not being able to get away from me. Right. And, um, you know, I think it's, I, you know, Khabib, I have a ton of respect for that guy. You know, seems like he's a, a very strong moral fiber and works really hard. You know, he's kind of a funny character, which I really like. And, you know, yeah, I have a ton of respect for those guys. And, and I like, you know, they're, they're, they're more Sambo than wrestling, right? So it's a little different, but I like that aspect of like, they're just out there trying to maul you, which is, you know, some people don't like it. I really like it. How about a guy like Colby Covington, who may not have kind of had your resume in, in college, right? But he's got an incredible motor, endless cardio. And he just, like you he's said, on. he mauls somebody nonstop and people just don't seem to have answers for that. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just a testament of hard work, right? You see guys, and there's, like, I love watching a guy with, like, pristine boxing because it's just so cool to see. It's something that is it's different to me, so I really have a lot of respect for it. But I, as much as that is cool, I love to see a guy with just, like, the, the word that comes to mind is heart. You know, he's just out there, and he's like, I don't care if this takes one minute or 25. I am just going to fight some, fight you. It's a fight, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um you brought up Covington and there's other guys like that too, but I have a ton of respect for a guy who's ready to go out there and just like make it a battle. Yeah. You know, I think, I think generally in sports, there's this predisposition that we have as humans to kind of maybe take the easy way out if we can. And whenever you have a guy who's like, no, I want this to be really hard, really brutal for me and for you. I have a ton of respect for a guy like that, you know, as a, as a fighter. Right. Um. All right. What about, Henry Cejudo, he won his gold medal early. And, yes. you know, you're talking about you've already wrestled at the international level. You've medaled. You want the Olympics maybe in 2024. In 2024, and I, I know it's hard to forecast, but if you were to win an Olympic gold medal um, and maybe even a world championship, do you think you'd be satisfied with wrestling and then maybe reconsider your MMA decision like Cejudo or – a guy like Jordan Burroughs, where he's just metal after metal after metal, stuck with the wrestling, kind of thought about the MMA, but just said, no, uh, uh, this is this is this is what I'm going to do right here. Yeah. You know, in a way, they're kind of doing the same thing where, you know, they hit they hit a really big milestone in their career and they both you can tell we're like, well, what's next? What's the next thing? And, you know, for Cejudo, he's like, I want to be a great UFC fighter. I want to conquer the UFC. And for Burroughs, he's like, I want to be the greatest wrestler ever, right? And, you know, that's a huge goal that they both set. Completely, not completely, but different fields, but huge, huge goal. And I have a ton of respect for those guys. For me, you know, I don't know if it's as much of, like, the metal. I There's a ceiling that we all have, you know, where it's like, this is, I'm not going to get any better than I am right now. And I want to see what that is. And if that takes me two years or eight years, you know, whatever. But that's, 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 I think when I'm ready, it's like, I know, like, all right, this is the pinnacle. This is as good as I'm going to get. Let's see what that is. Is that, you know, world silver? Is that Olympic gold? Is that dominating at the world level? What's that look like? And I think that's kind of, that's, that's when I'm going to be ready. Whenever I hit that, like, all right, this is it for me. This is the best I could ever be, you know? And just, so I think to answer your question, I guess it, it, it might, it doesn't have to do with the metal. It's, it's just, that I'm going to know, I'm going to yeah. know and be like, this is it. And I yeah. think that's kind of a cop out answer. I know, but that's no. really how I feel about it. No. Yeah. I totally get it. And there's really no right answer, wrong answer. It's your answer. And honestly, we, you really don't know. I guess that's one thing I can tell you that you've yet to experience is just mid 25s, thirties and forties. We all change our outlook changes, you know? And yeah. so, I could be talking to a completely different person in three years. We could be talking about your MMA debut in three years, or maybe you'll grace us with one more interview talking about wrestling, you know, and, 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 and uh, continuing to add to your incredible, uh, re you know, read the resume that you have, but all right. Uh, last question, Cornell, obviously prestigious university. 
Um, you went all four years. Did, did you finish the the education side as well? You finished your degree, or, or where are you at with that? What What did you major in? Yeah, so I'm in my last semester right now um, at Cornell. They you can kind of pick your own major. You kind of have to lobby to get into it. But my major is sports administration and management. Um, my original plan. I, I was in pre-med and I was like, I'm not going to be a doctor. What am I doing? You know, and I, I switched into this major with the intention of, you know, I want to coach. I want to be a great wrestling coach. And that was how I felt, you know. Um, I still feel like that. I still feel like that's something I could be really successful in, you know, in my future. And kind of the thought process was, listen, I'm at this Ivy League school. I'm at this incredible institution. I could just take a bunch of classes that don't matter, but I, I should try to build some skill you know, build some skill for the rest of my life that I'm going to be able to fall back on. And I kind of went back and forth with the uh, my advisor a little bit to let me do it. And, you know, we found this major. So I'm mostly involved in communication, nutritional science, uh, business and marketing, psychology, that kind of stuff. And um, I think it's a good skill set, you know, for being a coach, manager, CEO type of position in the athletics field. You want a program like Kale or John Smith or maybe something on the high school level like Daniel Cormier? You know, again, kind of like the MMA question, this answer could change. But, like, right now I, I want to run a program, a, a college right. program. You know, I, I I know how much, you know, our head coach means to me and kind of what he did for me as a person, you know, mm-hmm. outside of the wrestling. And, like, I want to be that guy for, you know, guys coming in. I, You know, he's he's somebody who is closer to family to me than my coach. And, you know, he's – he, and it's not just me, you know, there's, there's 15, 20, 30 guys that you could interview that would say that about him. And it's his second year of coaching uh, as the head coach. So I, I just, I want to be that guy, you know, for those people. And, and on top of that, you know, I have such an appreciation for it. That's really the highest level that you're going to coach at where you get the college guys, you know, you get a guy who comes in when he's 18 and if he sticks around to compete after, I might coach that guy until he's 30 when he retires, you know, for competing at an international level. So you can really get a lot of time with a guy and you can really help them. Like we're talking for me. I want to see what my peak is. I can be the guy that takes a kid when he's 18 and hits their peak, which is a really special thing you can do for somebody. Hell yeah. Uh, that's amazing actually. And I'm glad that you were able to find a major that applied to that. This is great stuff. All right, Yanni, thank you so much for the time. We really no, appreciate thank it. You. Congratulations yeah, you for your accomplishments. Can't wait to see the next chapter. And if you ever find yourself in Vegas, we'd love to have you in our studio and and maybe chat some more. But thanks for today. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for having me.